Hi. So today we're going to discuss a surgery that is very standard that has been done thousands and thousands and thousands of times before. And this surgery is the closure of eardrum holes or perforations. So the question becomes that why make a video on it? What's so special about it? And as we go through this video, we will explain what are the newer things, the newer techniques that are there, which is what makes this video worth it. So step number one is that eardrum perforations or holes in your eardrums have been known and these have been closed for about 70, 80 years now. The normal common way of doing this is to make a small cut behind the ear, raise a flap of the eardrum, lift the entire eardrum up like a curtain and put a new membrane as a graft. Now that technique is reasonably standard and a good technique but you can obviously understand the problems. The cut behind the ear takes time to heal and because it is a sensitive area people find it difficult to wear glasses. Um, it can also swell with the glasses and because of the pressure it can also be itchy and people can feel a pulling sensation which most people don't want. The second thing is that many of these eardrum hole surgeries, even if they work in the initial part, if you follow them over a period of time, they may fail sometimes. And both of these things have been improved now. So the way we do these surgeries is number one, we do them endoscopically. That means these are done by using a scope and going through the ear canal. The immediate advantage of this is that it makes it a cutless and scarless surgery. So patients can go back to work by second or third day. They don't have any water restrictions. It's a completely pain-free surgery. And because now we are not dependent on the body to heal the cut, this can be done at any age, 55, 60, 65 years of age. At any age, this is not a contraindication. So number one improvement is changing from a surgery with a cut to a completely cutless surgery. Number two is the way we put the graft. Now in the past, the entire eardrum, which is made up of three layers, would be lifted up and the graft would be placed under it. Now that is okay, but the problem in that situation is that we are depending on the layers to heal to each other. If by chance the layers, the top layer and the inner layer attach before the top layer and the other end of the top layer can meet, as you can see, it can lead to a persistent hole or it can lead to a weakness of that area which can further give way in the future. So the way we do these surgeries in the current day is something called as interlay, which means that as we go and lift the flap, we open the eardrum like a book. So we lift up the top layer of the skin and we keep the bottom layer of the mucosa or the lining of the ear below. And then we put the graft in between the two. You can immediately understand the benefits of this process because now there is no way for the top layer to connect to the middle layer because the graft is forming a barrier. So the top layer must connect to the top layer, the bottom layer must connect to the bottom layer and because the graft is sandwiched between the two, the overall healing and the strength of the membrane that happens is absolutely phenomenal. So this is a surgery that we're going to show you today. It is called endoscopic interlay tympanoplasty. And let's go ahead and look at this. This is a young gentleman about 40 years age who came to us with a eardrum hole and significant hearing loss. So let's go ahead and walk into the operating room together and I'll show you how this surgery is done and how this gives us nearly 100% success rates. The surgery is started by harvesting the graft or the new membrane either by a very small incision in the thigh or by a hairline incision from the scalp. The first step is to make sure that we freshen out the eardrum hole so that all the scarred areas are removed. Then we go ahead and lift a small flap of skin from the ear canal. As we get to the eardrum right here, you will see me instead of lifting the entire eardrum slowly start to separate the eardrum into its two layers. This process can sometimes take a little bit of time, so we must be careful and give it enough time so that we can slowly separate the 
drop it to layer 3. As we proceed, here you can see there are usually small attachments or adhesions between the two layers. We have to gently break them and keep separating them into the layers. On the top is the skin and on the bottom is the lining of the ear or the mucosa or the inner lining that we showed you in blue in the previous animation. Once we have separated the hole into the two layers, we need to check the bones of hearing just so as we can make sure that the hearing bones are working fine. Here you can see we are clearly demonstrating the two layers that the hole is in. Now we are going ahead and breaking the mucosal lining because this gentleman had a very thickened layer of mucosa because of recurrent infections and we had to make sure that the bones of hearing will work perfectly fine before I put the new membrane or the graft in. Here you can see me gently teasing out the bones of hearing and as we expected there were a lot of mucosal adhesions between the two. So I go ahead and break all the adhesions so that the ear bones can work perfectly fine as can be seen here. Once the thick linings are removed, the eardrum bones work perfectly normal, which allows me to guarantee that his hearing will come back to 100% normal. The movement of the ear bones are checked here, which is found to be great. Now we are ready to go ahead and put the graft in. The graft is tucked in to make sure that it completely covers all the layers. The skin is put back as can be seen right here gel foam is placed and now we are good to go. If you have seen the surgery, it should be fairly obvious what the benefits of this surgical process is. Now once you finish this surgery, it's a very stress-free surgery for us because once I've done it, I know for a fact that it is extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely that this technique will ever fail. So as a surgery, it allows me as a doctor to give my patient the guarantee that once I've done this procedure, we will see very, very, very strong results. However, you have to also accept the fact that when we do this, separating the eardrum into different layers is a slightly more technically challenging process. And since we do these endoscopically, it is further more challenging because you have to do this entire separation of the eardrum with one single hand because your other hand is holding the endoscope. This does have a learning curve. So this does require surgeons to require special training and to practice on these specific techniques until they can get confident in it. But as a technique, they're really great. I'm very happy with the way how this surgery and many, many, many other surgeries that we do on this technique. And let us go ahead and follow this patient as he recovers and let's see the kind of results we get. So as you can see, this is the ear canal and we're going with that is your new ear drop, okay? It has beautifully formed, okay? That is the bone of the ear that you can see. It has formed gorgeously, okay? Mm -hmm.